Okay, so right now we're going to talk about 8.1, the first four rules. So this is 8.1, part one. So our first rule, right, look at the first example. If it rains, then the ground gets wet. It rained. So if you knew both these things in English, what would you logically conclude, right? You'd conclude that the ground is wet, right? Because if it rains, then the ground gets wet, and it rained. Therefore, the ground got wet. This rule is called modus ponens, or we abbreviate it just by saying MP. So, turn that English into logic, right? If it rains, then it gets wet. So, if it rains, then the ground gets wet. It rained. So, that's our first premise, right? That's our second premise. And maybe in this really, really easy proof, right? Our one step proof here, right? The conclusion could be R, right? That could be given to you. Or sorry, W. Then, based on what you know, if it rains and the ground gets wet, and you know that it rained, you could conclude W, right? Based on that pattern. And we would just put line one, which was the conditional and line 2, which was the antecedent, modus ponens. So that would be a really, really easy proof, right? We have only one step. Now, modus ponens, right, it's a two-line rule every single time. It's a two-line rule every single time. It's an error rule all every single time. What you're looking for is a pattern every time you do one of these proof rules. In this case, you're looking for an arrow, and you're looking for the left side of the arrow. If you have that, then you can get the right side of the arrow. Doesn't matter which one of these two lines comes first, doesn't matter anything like that. The one sentence rule for modus ponens is, if you have the left side of the arrow, then you can get the right side of the arrow. If you know the antecedent of a conditional, you can get the consequent. If you have the left, you can get the right. We have the left here on line two, so we're able to get the right side of that arrow. We have the left side of this conditional right here. So let's just get the W. So that's our first rule of modus ponens. Let's look at another example. If it rains, then the ground gets wet, but the ground is not wet. So if I told you that if it rains, the ground's going to get wet, but the ground's not wet, what would you conclude? Right? Then it must not have rained. Then you can say it, it didn't rain, right? Because we know that rain makes the ground wet and the ground isn't wet. So this rule is called modus tollens, or MT. So symbolized over here, right? If it rains, then the ground gets wet, but the ground is not wet, right? The ground is not wet. So what could we logically conclude based on that? We could logically include that it didn't rain, right? So Anytime you have this pattern with an arrow and the denial or the the uh, the denial of the consequent, right? In this case, tilde W, then we can get the denial of the antecedent, right? Tilde R. So this is the pattern we're looking for. With modus ponens, we wanted the left side, and we could get the right side. With this pattern, we want a tilde, right? See that pattern? A tilde in front of the right side. That lets us get a tilde in front of the left side. So this is the pattern that we're looking for. We have to have an arrow, and we have to have the denial of the consequent, or the denial of the right side. It takes two lines. So if this was, you know, line one, line two, then we would just say, okay, line one, that's where the arrow was. Line two, that's where the cons that's where the denial of the right side was, or the tilde of the right side. That would be in T. So that's the way that we use modus tollens, looking for that pattern right there. And again, it doesn't matter if this was before or this was after. It, none of that matters. Don't make more proof rules than you have to. So looking at another rule now, if it rains, then the ground is wet. If the ground gets wet, then Bill will slip. Well, another rule that we have lets us conclude when we have two conditional set up like this, that 
if it rains, if it rains, then Bill will slip, right? Because if this happens, then that happens. And if that happens, right, then this happens. And so we just kind of cut out the middleman. Symbolized over here, right? If it rains, then it gets wet. If it gets wet, then Bill will slip, right? So we just basically cut out the middleman when we do this rule, which is called hypothetical syllogism, or HS, we just cut out the middleman. If R happens, then W happens. If W happens, then B happens. So we just go straight to if R happens, then B happens. What we're looking for with this pattern is we need the same letter, right, in this case W, to be the consequent of one conditional and the antecedent of another conditional. If that's the case, then we can just cut out the W, cut out the middleman, and go straight to this new conditional. We can form a new conditional. HS is always a two-line rule, so if these were our lines we were dealing with, right, number one was the first conditional, number two is the second conditional, HS. Right, that's how we use hypothetical syllogism. What we're looking for is that pattern right there. Consequent in one conditional, antecedent in another conditional. So that's HS. It doesn't come up too often, but it comes up when it does come up, you really need to be paying attention for it. Modus ponens and modus tollens, they'll come up all the time. So our last rule in this video is something that confuses people, but it really shouldn't. You can eat pizza or you can eat queso. You can't eat queso. right? So you're given two options and then you're told one of those options isn't an option anymore. So what would you logically conclude? You can eat pizza or queso. Oh, we ran out of queso. What are you going to eat for dinner? Right? You eat pizza. Right? For some reason people make this rule, disjunctive syllogism, more complicated than it needs to be. So imagine you have the disjunction P or Q, right? You can eat pizza or you can eat queso. You can't eat queso. So what are you left with? Right? Eating pizza. So you're given a disjunction and one of those, right, you have the denial of one of those disjuncts. In this case, right, this right here. Some other ways to look at that, right, if I had A or B and I had tilde A, what would you write down right here? Right? A or B. The answer on the test is A or the answer on the test is B. The answer on the test is not A. Hopefully everyone knows the B, right? Now, nothing gets crossed out, nothing gets broken, but if visually, if it helps you, you can think of this and this canceling out, right? Just if it helps you see that pattern. How about on this example right here? All right, let me give a flashback. What if we had tilde M and we had uh, what would we get for that? Can you recognize that pattern? That would be tilde P modus tollens, right? That's basically an overview of the four rules. We're going to talk about the practice problems in a little bit, and we'll talk about the other four rules first.